Nathan. Hello, everyone. Uh, there is no Nathan, sir. Sorry? There is no Nathan, sir, in this meeting. Okay. Uh, just a minute, guys. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry for late. Uh, due to some technical issues, we couldn't uh, log in. Uh, yeah. So, hi, guys. Uh, welcome to 360 DG. Welcome to 360 DG TMG's uh, Domain Analytics. So, today we are uh, going to discuss about the healthcare analytics. So, how are you all? Uh, just confirm you guys whether I'm audible or not. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for the uh, delay. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. So, uh, the today's agenda is what is healthcare analytics? How are we going to use the machine learning algorithm in healthcare analytics? And what are the data analytics that we can, uh, where, where we can use uh, the same machine, machine learning algorithms? And what are the applications of machine learning algorithm when it comes to healthcare? And what are the challenges? What are the challenges that we are facing when it comes to healthcare and how we're going to solve using the machine learning algorithm that we're going to uh, discuss and what are the stages of analytics in every machine learning project we'll be having some stages. So what are the stages and how are you going to build the data science projects when it comes to any domain, whether it is healthcare, whether it is agriculture, whether it is, um, you know, HR analytics, account analytics, law analytics, any project, how are you going to apply the data science project or the stages of analytics. And when it comes to crisp, uh, crisp ML methodologies, how are you going to apply when it comes to data science? When it comes to data science project, we have six phases, six phases that are called CRISP ML methodologies, cross industry standard process machine learning. These are called CRISP ML methodologies. For every data science project, we'll be having six phases that we have to go through. And what are the inferential statistics? How are we going to use the inferential statistics in order to judge the data that we will be? going to discuss and what are the business use cases uh, using the machine learning algorithms will be will have some use cases how we going to applying that machine learning algorithm to different different um, use cases like we have tnbc cases tnbc prediction we have a, a heart disease prediction heart disease prediction so what are the application like different different application we will discuss in the class Before going to the uh, analytics or domain analytics, what is the machine learning, guys? What is the machine learning, guys? Anyone? What is machine learning? Okay, so what happens when machine learning will be having, will be having large amount of data. Will be having large amount of historical data. Based on that, we'll be analyzing that, that particular data. 
will be analyzing the data and based on those data we will be coming up with we will be coming up with new inferences so basically machine learning is we will be working on large number of historical data based on the data we will be learning the pattern the same thing we are applying to machine learning to predict the new outcomes so it is completely based on the historical data if you have a historical data we have to do some analytics on that particular data based on those uh, data itself we will be finding out the patterns we will be finding out the patterns from that historical data and we are predicting the future or we are predicting the future outcomes so so this is our machine learning so in that machine learning we will be having something like supervised and unsupervised in unsupervised we won't be having any labels but when it comes to supervised we will be having labels those all things we will discuss in the next class but we'll simply go through this uh, what are we simply gone through what is exactly the machine learning when it comes to machine learning it is a subset of it is a subset of ai it is a subset of ai like i told you earlier machine learning completely works on the historical data based on that only we will be giving the predictions so why do we need machine learning when it comes to healthcare analytics are we using machine learning already or what are the things that you can improve in uh, healthcare analytics that we discuss what is the predictive analytics in healthcare so you might have come across uh, the machine learning algorithm that we are using while well, uh, covid you might have gone through one website every now and then every now and then uh, they are updating how many covid cases we have how many uh, you know covid deaths we have how many uh, cases are forecasted forecasted cases how many cases will be in next 7 days something like that all those things how it is happening all of those things how it is happening they have historical data and they will have a pattern every now and then they have a pattern based on those only we will be forecasting what will be the cases in next 7 days what will be the cases uh, in next one week or one month what will be the cases after two months this is our will be calculating based on the pattern predictive analytics is set of methods for analyzing data for further forecasting it relies on past events to forecast the optimum course of action that will benefit the business it is like having time machine that can travel to the future let's say one uh, let's take one used case let's take one used case that is tnbc relapse we will be discussing those used cases in the pre, uh, the next classes but i'm just taking one example how we going to do uh, how we going to predict the future outcome tnbc triple negative breast cancers so it is very frequently occurring uh, you know a cancer when it comes to women what happens in TN tnbc cases so this uh, triple negative breast cancer even though it is cured even though it is cured there is a chances of relapsing again in some time we don't know exactly how many how many years it will take or even how many how many months it will take but there is a possibility of relapsing sometimes it might not relapse 
so it is completely depend on patient historic data patient historic data it completely depends on patient historic data if you have like if you have historical data of different different people based on that you can learn the pattern right if you uh, based on those historical data we can train one machine learning model and we can find out some patterns based on that we can forecast whether that particular this particular uh, patient gonna uh, this particular patient cancer is gonna relapse or not in that case it will be very useful right if you can predict whether that whether that particular cancer that is tnbc gonna relapse or not if if you get able to do that in that case you can be cautious you can do some uh, some treatment before that only we can uh, develop something uh, you know some some something else cure some uh, other cures for that particular patient or you can come up with some new treatments you can come up with new treatment in order to avoid the relapse you can do all of these things if you can able to predict how we are doing that based on all the historic data if you are able to based on the historical data only you can able to predict predict the future that is what he is saying it is like having time machine that can travel to the future you can predict the future just by having the historical data so healthcare analytics apply the same machine learning to process the data and predict the future outcomes so are we using the same are we using the uh, machine learning algorithm machine learning algorithm in healthcare analytics or we are yet to use it so for that question yeah we are using the machine learning models in healthcare analytics but where we can use the the machine learning models where we can improve the healthcare that we can will see there are different different uh, you know cases that we can use the health uh, machine learning models to bring out the best let's say classification where you can use machine learning classification you can use in classification you can use in clustering you can use in clustering or you can use in prediction 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 of, of course have taken one uh, example that is tnbc how you can predict those use cases we will be discussing in the next class uh, we will be having uh, each and each and every algorithm based on that we will be having one use case how you going to apply uh, let's say decision tree model how you going to apply the decision tree to healthcare where you can apply the decision tree let's say uh, linear regression how we going to apply the linear regression in the healthcare we will be seeing all those use cases in a in a in coming classes where can where we can use the machine learning classification you can use clustering you can use prediction using prediction you can use anomaly detection anomaly detection you can use using anomaly detection you can use in automation how can we use the classification let's say one use case whether that particular have a cancer whether some particular person has a cancer or not if you have a if you have a historical data you can build a model you can you can feed the same historical model 
historical data to the model you can bring out the pattern and you can train machine learning algorithm that can that can say whether that particular guy or particular person has a cancer or not based on so we can classify right whether that particular person has a cancer or not or any other cases like whether that particular uh, person will have any heart diseases or not based on the historical or is the health uh, conditions and where we can do clustering let's say in the recent times what happened covid cases how we going to uh, classify that that particular person has covid or not will be have some will be having some symptoms will be having some symptoms based on those symptoms we can classify we can classify is that particular having the is that particular person have the covid or not we can do classification or clustering you can do clustering whether that particular person has the covid or not based on the and you can do prediction of course anomaly detection if there is something wrong in uh, let's say you are using some operation uh, equipments for curing uh, you know doing the uh, operations if you are using some equipments if there is something wrong if there is something wrong in that particular equipment you can easily detect if you have a historical dot of that particular equipment how long that particular equipment can work without having any defection if you have that particular data you can easily detect if there is any anomaly or you can do automation we can use a to do to do automation in operation theater see when comes to healthcare especially you need you need precision you need precision you can train your ai model for precision operations at that so like that we have numerous cases that where we can actually apply the machine learning algorithm to to improve the quality or to improve the precision of uh health care so what are the opportunities what are the opportunities we have in health care what are the opportunities for the machine learning we have in health care what we, what we can do what we can possibly do in health care using the machine learning the very first uh a thing that we can do is see when uh, doctors when professionals healthcare professional working they don't need to work on gathering data gathering data of particular patient instead of that they can simply focus on patient only we can do automation all the things gathering data of that particular uh, you know disease all the information that we can do using the machine learning so that we can reduce the the time for professional that healthcare professional so that they can simply focus on that particular patient and uh, there is one uh, one thing uh, in pandemic during the pandemic it has been proven that 92% accuracy it has been proven that machine learning model machine learning model predicted with 92% accuracy that uh, this first particular patient whoever having the covid can survive or not with 92% accuracy so you might have worked on if you if you didn't work on any project while you are working on project 
getting 92 92% accuracy is not that easy so machine learning algorithm predicted that that particular person having covid will gonna survive or not with 92% accuracy that is that means among 100 people among 100 people we can correctly identify that 92 people 92 percent whether whatever the prediction that we are doing for 92 people it is becoming same we call it we call it true positive and true negative whatever the prediction that machine learning is doing becoming same as it is i mean uh, the real case and the predicted case are are same and what else we can do so especially in uh, in healthcare analytics there is a possibility of doing the human errors human errors human errors if you introduce a machine learning you can avoid the human errors you can avoid the most of the most of the human errors you can easily avoid using the machine learning so machine learning in healthcare analytics it will predict the illness and nowadays we will be having personalized medication personalized medication what is it personalized medication based on the patient condition some treatment see uh, let's say some some person is suffering from covid and he has other health issues as well like diabetes something other health issues as well so in that case if you treat if you, if you treat this uh, person who has a diabetes or asthma the person who has a diabetes or asthma just like the normal patient so it is not uh, whatever the treatment that you are doing it won't be effective in that case you have to come up with a different strategy you have to take a special care for these people who are who has diabetes and asthma that we can do using the machine learning we can do recommend personalized medication to that particular patient based on his patient you uh, know uh, history history of health history based on health history records you can uh, you know do recommend personalized medication that is also possible using the machine learning and see uh, using the pandemic and because of the pandemic we came to know like uh, we going to know that uh, how uh, you know uh, future how unpredictable unpredictable is the future nobody has predicted that covid outbreak will be this high so we can do we can do predict the virus outbreak using the machine learning as well we can do predict the uh, you know uh, virus outbreaks using the machine learning as well so where are the uh, i mean uh, I'll, i'll go through a few things where exactly we can apply the machine learning in healthcare one it it can be smart record keeping smart record keeping each and every record when comes to healthcare analytics is very important if you have come across the same case you might need to go through the uh, the previous history i mean if if you have come across the same case in the uh, in the previous in the history in that case we can do smart record keeping using the machine learning history you don't need to search for that if you have come across the same uh, that particular case and if machine learning has detected that 
it will automatically bring out the all the details that are similar to similar to that particular case that has happened in the previous previously in the history if it is happened in the, uh, happened in the history machine learning itself uh, find finds out the similar records and will bring out it that you can do a yeah, personalized medicine that we have discussed and machine learning in medical imaging nowadays using ai using ai just just by images if you have some allergy if you have some rashes just by looking at images or just by scanning those images machine learning can identify what kind of disease it is and what is the reason behind it and it, it can try to do the recommendation to that particular illness it will do recommendation of medicine medication to that particular illness and of course the robotic surgery here also we can apply the machine learning data collection we can do data collection and we can do drug recovery prediction drug recovery prediction recovery prediction drug recovery recovery prediction when we have like historic data in how much time that particular patient with a particular history particular patient with particular medical history is you know taking time to recover from particular disease let's take the covid data itself so what happening when you have uh, some uh, based on your history let's say you have some other diseases in that case what is happening to recover from the covid it is taking to recover from the covid it is taking much longer time compared to the normal person who doesn't have any medical history so that we can uh, if you have that particular data in your history you can easily predict you can easily predict how much time it will take to that particular person to come out of that particular illness that you can do using the machine learning of course you can do the same uh, you can easily classify whether uh, that particular person has a tumor or not uh, age drug development and lowering cost see when uh, when we are doing the drug development or drug discovery in that case you need to go through a lot of records lot 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 of lot of records in order to come up with one solution in that case it is not possible for human to go through all those records instead we can deploy the machine learning algorithm to bring out the similar patterns so it will bring out the best best data or best test i mean uh, cases so that we can simply yeah simply analyze the same uh, uh, those test cases only and you can come up with drug normally what happens uh, to come up with some vaccine we have seen in this uh, pandemic what happens when you have, uh, if, if you you uh, know to come up with the vaccine it take a lot of time at least 5 to 7 years of time it will take but covid vaccine came in just around 6 to 1 years of time one year of time how it is happened how it is happened because of machine learning if you involve machine learning in healthcare analytics it can do faster predictions it, it can do sample i mean uh, you know faster sampling and it will take you know take a burden off of whatever the healthcare professionals that are that they are working 
like i mentioned earlier uh, in the very first session uh, very first slide that in order to do any machine learning project we have to go through phases different different phases those are called stages of analytics let's say what are those uh, stages of analytics descriptive analytics diagnostic analytics predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics normally we will remember like this d square and p square descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive so what happens when you want to come up with some solution you have to go through see machine learning completely based on the historical data only if you don't have any historical data if you don't have historical data you won't be able to do anything when it comes to machine learning so you should have some historical data to come up with a solution that is why i am keep saying every time historical data historical data historical data. because it is very important to come up with some pattern let's say you went to doctor let's say you went to doctor what he'll say he'll ask you things like uh, do you have any test medical test have you gone through any medical test he won't simply give you direct by just saying you have this fever take this medicine and go he won't tell you something uh, something like that right so first he will go through your historical data have you gone through any uh, you know blood blood test have you gone through any urine test he'll ask you all those details then he will observe all those things and then he will do required diagnosis based on that he will do required diagnosis then he will predict then he will predict like yeah yeah you might have a fever because of this reason he has gone through all those records he has gone through all those records and he will come up with some prediction that yeah because of this reason you might have this illness so based on that he will give you some prescription based on that he will give you some prescription that please follow uh, you know, uh, take these medicines so it will be okay something like that he will give you the same case if you have some uh, you know uh, one use uh, one uh, problem statement you have problem statement statement saying tnbc whether this particular uh, person or for this particular patient is uh, no triple negative breast cancer going to relapse or not it is just a simple problem statement then in that case what you have to do we will we'll be discussing this uh, triple negative breast cancer in uh, decision tree use case i am just going through the uh, how stages of analytics uh, you know plays a role when uh, we are going through the project so what we have to do first we have to collect the data of different different patient who has tnbc triple negative breast cancer who has tnbc we will collect the data and then we will be building the model by feeding that data to algorithm then what what algorithms do it will come up with one pattern based on that if you see what happens uh, right after building the algorithm we will deploy in some uh, let's say flask uh, web, uh, web application have de uh, deployed then you have to enter the new data so that it can predict something like that we will be doing the prediction so when you are building the data science project you have crisp ml methodology that you have to follow that is called cross industry standard process it is for every single project whether it is hr whether it is agriculture analytics whether it is um, accounts accounts analytics whether it is logistic any project will be having just one methodology that is why it is called as a cross industry standard process it is called as a cross industry standard process it will be applicable to uh, applicable to every single 
domain. So what we will be having uh, in the uh, CRISP ML? Previously, we used to have a CRISP DM. Same cross industry standard process data mining. In that, uh, in that we won't be having monitoring and maintenance. That is that has been updated in ML machine learning quality analysis. So what we'll be having in the CRISP, CRISP ML first, if you have a, a problem statement, you will go through that problem statement. We'll understand what is the business understanding and then we'll come up with business objective and what are the business constraints. We'll come up with business objective and business constraint. Then if you have, uh, if, if you have data, if the client has provided you data, in that case, you'll go through data. You'll try to understand that particular data. But if the client is not provided, in that case, you have to go for web scraping. There are so many uh, organizations or institutes that are working on different, different domain. You can simply go to that particular uh, uh, sites or organizations uh, websites and you can web scrape uh, the required required information. And then you have to form a data frame and then you have to understand what is the data about is data, whatever the data that you have collected or if, if the uh, data is given by the client, is it uh, enough for you or you need any uh, other data. So you have to go through the data understanding and then you have to start preparing the data. In that, we'll be having different, different, if you have uh, any anomalies in, uh, present in that particular data, then you have to, if analysis, uh, anomalies pre present in your particular data, you have to clean that data and you have to, uh, you have to clean everything and you have to uh, ready, uh, make it ready to feed to the particular model. So once the model uh, building is done, you have to evaluate. See, whatever the model that you have built, is it working fine or not? Or it is giving any biased results. In that case, what do you have to do? For that, you have to do model evaluations. Model evaluation. Yeah. In that, we will be having different, different evaluation metrics. Uh, for classification, we have uh, different. For uh, regression, we have some different uh, techniques that we will discuss in the next class. We have different different uh, evaluation metrics for classification, regression, and unsupervised learning. Also, we'll be having some metrics to go through. And then, once the model uh, is done, you have to deploy the model, and then you have to check the maintain, monitor, and maintenance. Whatever the uh, model we are building, is it working fine, or do we need to change anything? If, uh, if any something new cases are coming, you have to update the model with those cases and all those things we'll be doing in monitoring and maintenance. So normally it is not possible to work on the population data. If you have like millions of cases, millions of cases, in that case, it is not possible to work on all the population data. Then what we'll do? will create a sampling frame. Let's say uh, if you are to analyze the reviews of that particular, let's say you have one uh, use case like iPhone. You want to go through reviews of all the people who bought that particular iPhone, whether it is positive review you have, or you have a negative review, you want to go through it. Is it possible to go through all those, uh, you know, there might be like hundreds of millions of people who bought that particular product. Is it possible to go through all those millions of data? No, right? In that case, what you have to do? You have to create a sample frame, sampling frame, sample random sample. It is, it is called as the best, one of the best model uh, when it comes to taking sample and working on it. 
sample random sample so what we do you will take a uh, sample out of those 100 million then take like 10% of that value in that case what happen it is 10 million and you can take one more sample out of this in that case it becomes 1 million in that case you can work on that 1 million sample and you can judge or make a comments on population will be taking sample out of the data and whatever the predictive analytics that we are doing will be doing on that sample only will be doing on sample only whatever the inferences we are getting from that sample we are passing comments on population data based on the sample data whatever the prediction that we are making on sample but we are judging the population data in this case over 100 million bought 100 million people bought that uh, iphone we are simply calculating about 100k or 1 million we are doing the predictive analytics on 1 million people and whichever the whether it is positive sentiment or whether it is negative sentiment any sentiment that whatever the sentiment that we are getting based on that sentiment we are judging the population that is the inferential statistics so what are the use cases we will be discussing in the uh, next classes so we will be having uh, five use cases one is unsupervised uh, when it comes to unsupervised learning unsupervised learning means you don't really have sample random sample sample random we are taking a random sample so we are, see let's say you have these are the entries or reviews of that particular uh, people who have bought that particular phone let's say something like that we have 1 2 3 4 5 these are the like we have 100 million in that case what we'll do we'll take random we'll take random random 1 million we'll take or random 100k it is not like uh, one order first to uh, 100k i'm taking something like that it is not something like that among those uh, population will simply take random sample among that population will say will, will, will be taking the random sample that is called sample random sample we are not taking any order any order simply randomly we are uh, picking some particular person and we are uh, collecting that review yeah we are uh, when comes to use cases we will be having two one is unsupervised and one is supervised in unsupervised i am taking uh, k means clustering and i'll try to uh, you know group or cluster on diabetic prediction data we'll be doing in the next class or uh, i think third day on third day we'll be discussing this use case how we going to uh, you know apply the k means in diabetic prediction that you will see how we not, uh, you know differentiate or how we going to do clustering what happens in supervised we won't be having any labels we won't be having any labels when it comes to unsupervised learning so we'll try to form different different cluster based on the similarity based on the homogeneity or similarity will be forming cluster that we will see in the third day or uh, third day i'm not wrong okay third day we'll be doing that and using the when it comes to supervised supervised will be having four use cases one more two use cases are required okay we'll be having four use cases supervised means we will be having labeled data we will be having labeled data so using the knn k nearest neighbor knn classification we will be uh, predicting whether that particular person will be will have uh, disease um, heart disease or not based on the historic data and when comes to linear regression 
will be having one use case uh, that is predicting the adipo adipose tissue so what happens people who have uh, like obes obesity obesity people who have obesity there is a high chances of having heart disease you know getting heart disease there is high chance so uh, instead of going for scanning it is uh, scanning is not good for health if you go for scanning so there is uh, i mean you will be losing the immune system every time every now and then if you go for scanning there is a possibility of losing your immune system instead of going for that we will be having simple uh, mechanism we have developed some simple mechanism in that using the circumference is in the circumference we'll be discussing this in uh, use cases when it comes to linear regression we'll be calculating the what will be the adipose tissue whether that particular guy will be having uh, you know is there is there any possibility of heart disease or not we will try to predict and dietary uh, let i uh, like i have mentioned in the earlier tnbc relapse rate prediction using the dietary if that particular i mean it is when it comes to tnbc that is triple negative breast, breast cancer there is a possibility of relapse after some time so based on the patient's history whether tnbc going to relapse or not we'll try to predict and when it comes to neural network and uh, here we have a heart disease here we have a heart disease whether that particular person will going to have a heart disease or not based on the uh, historical data we have to predict these are the used cases these are the used cases guys that will be discussed in the that we will be discussing in the next class Yeah, this is all about uh, the very first class of domain analytics, guys. Um, in in the next class, we will be discussing about um, what will be the CRISP ML methodologies. How we gonna do the data science project when it comes to healthcare analytics? We'll be taking one uh, example, use case example, and we'll try to implement all the phases, the different different phases. How we gonna implement? Uh, you know, first phase, second phase, something like that. We'll be having six phases now. Huh? each phase is what we will be doing that we will be discuss in the next class uh, if you are interested please try to join the next class as well because we will be uh, going through uh, so many use cases like we have four to five uh, i'll try to uh, execute how we going to apply uh, to discuss in the next class yeah thank you for uh, joining guys and uh, i hope you learned something uh, from this class and uh, please try to uh, subscribe the 360 dg channel and please uh, try to follow uh, for more updates to our linkedin channel our facebook uh, link that, that are provided here and yeah, that's it that's it guys for uh, for today class and uh, thank you for joining and we will see you in the next class and have a nice day thank you sir